There was a formal complaint made and filed with the Moab City Police Department in the Gabby Petito case, specifically in regards to the body cam footage on August 12th, where we saw Brian Laundrie and Gabby Petito on the side of the road. Now, in this report, it's 102 pages. It's a combined statement and investigative report. And in the report, it has violations that occurred by the officers and they stated which ones they violated and which ones they didn't. It says, after a formal complaint was filed with the Moab City Police Department, an independent law enforcement agency has completed a thorough review of the August 12, 2021 domestic violence incident involving Gabby Petito and Brian Laundrie. The independent agency's investigative report finds that the officers who responded to the incident made several unintentional mistakes that stemmed from the fact that officers failed to cite Miss Petito for domestic violence. The city acknowledges that this finding may raise questions and the issue is examined extensively in the investigative report. The report recommends improvements to both the policies and the training of the Moab City Police Department. Now they talked about in prior news footage about having extra training uh, or somebody on scene when it's a domestic violence situation that they have someone who is more qualified to be on scene with the police authorities, which I think is a great idea. Let me know your thoughts. So it says, these recommendations include providing additional training in domestic violence investigation as well as an additional legal training to ensure officers understand state laws and statutes, conducting an overall policy review, conducting a software review, and strengthening the review process for incidents reports. The investigative report also finds that a statement was never obtained from the original 911 caller and recommends that be done to make the incident report more complete. So. There was two 911 calls. They're talking about the first 911 call at the Moonflower and Brian and Gabby were seen and Brian, uh, you know, was hitting Gabby. So that was the initial report and that wasn't followed up on. It says the city intends to implement the report's recommendations. Based on the report's findings, the city of Moab believes our officers showed kindness, respect, and empathy in their handling of this incident. As the Moab City Police Department continues its daily mission to serve our community, efforts are underway to provide additional resources and tools to assist the in addressing domestic violence incidents. Plans are in place to add a trained domestic violence specialist to oversee incidents in investigated by Moab officers. Okay, so that's awesome. They are going to be doing that. We also will implement added and ongoing training and testing to ensure that the officers understand policies and procedures. The city of Moab sends our sincere condolences to the Petito family. Our hearts go out to them as they continue to deal with the tragic loss of their daughter. Now, Gabby was found on September 19th and she had been deceased for a few weeks. So shortly after August 12th is when Gabby died. So on September 27th, just a week after Gabby died, they were asked to conduct an independent investigation. And it says that there were also two additional officers on scene, Park Ranger and Melissa Hulls and Park Ranger Ryan Crawl. The incident involved Brian Christopher Laundrie and Gabrielle Gabby Venora P Petito. So the officers involved is Officer Pratt, who has worked with the Moab City Police Department intermittently since July of 2018. It says this included part-time employment and full-time employment. Officer Pratt returned full-time with Moab in December of 2020. Officer Pratt has approximately 16 years of law enforcement experience. At the time of this incident, Officer Pratt was the acting field training officer for Officer Robbins. Officer Robbins was hired in May of 2021 with the Moab City Police Department and had no prior law enforcement experience. At the time of this incident, Officer Robbins was on the final phase of his field training program. It says that the person writing the report was forwarded an email from the initial complainant attorney Tanya Reeves, and he has it included in this report. He says that Chief Edge indicated the Moab Police Department received the complaint and they believe there's value and insight to be gained from having an independent investigation that will ultimately provide insight and improve the department's responses to domestic violence cases moving forward. The investigator in this case is Captain Brandon Ratcliffe, who is employed by the Price City Police Department. 
So they give a synopsis of what happened. It says on August 12th at 4.39 p.m., the Grand County Dispatch Center received a call from a person who was calling to report that he described as a domestic dispute. This is the call that wasn't looked into. It says he reports he was driving and saw a gentleman slapping the girl. He stated he stopped driving and the male and female ran up and down the sidewalk where he proceeded to hit her. He stated they hopped into the van and drove off. He said he took a picture of the license plate and describes the vehicle and the license plate information. He further describes the make, model, and other characteristics of the van. And it says that an officer arrived at the Moonflower, and it says Officer Pratt arrives on scene at the Moonflower Community Co-op where the incident took place and asks dispatch for the reporting party's phone number. Officer Pratt also tells dispatch he spoke to another witness who gave more details on the vehicle that left. Based on Officer Pratt's report, the witness Officer Pratt is referring to, and that's the, that's the person. It's redacted. Officer Robbins stops the vehicle on the turnoff road that goes into Arches National Park after he observed the van cross over the double yellow line and crosses back over and hits the curb on the passenger side. Officer Robbins reports to dispatch the driver may be intoxicated after observing the driving pattern. Driver is showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject says to hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the arches just before the gate. Officer Robin stops the vehicle and has the female exit the vehicle, separating the male driver and female passenger. From the, this point forward, the male and female, Brian Laundry and Gabby Petito, never speak to each other again while law enforcement is in contact. They talked about how they took Brian Laundry's statement saying that it's been a long day, he had a little squabble, and they were at a coffee shop from 9 to 3. Brian stated that there were flies and it's been a tense and so that it had been definitely getting to Gabby and he said that they got back to the van, there was some little dirt at the back of the van and Brian stated he moved their food around and there was a little disagreement there. When asked about the disagreement, Brian stated it wasn't much of a disagreement but went on to say he had dirty feet and said they were little things, relationship things they were arguing about. Brian stated that Gabby was working on her website and said he gave her time. Brian stated they had a nice morning but Gabby got worked up as they were trying to get their day going. Brian said he tried to distance himself from Gabby by locking the van up and walking away. Brian said while doing this, he suggested to Gabby they both take a breather. Brian said he felt that was the only way for them to calm down, but Gabby was getting worked up. Brian said Gabby had her phone and was trying to get the keys from him, and that is when he was pushing her away. Brian said he knew he shouldn't push her, but stated he was just trying to push her away, stating they needed to take a minute, step back, and breathe. And, and it, we really had a nice morning, if, and if anything, but um, she just got you know, worked up because we were trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go, um, like, our just before the stuff that we okay. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had a cell phone in her hand. That's why I was pushing her away. It's because I, she, she wanted to, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not. You know, go anywhere, let's just calm down for a minute because she's getting worked up. And then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys to her, so I got away. I was just trying to, I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe. Brian said he had the keys because he didn't want Gabby to go anywhere as he didn't have his phone. Then added he doesn't really have a phone and was worried about her leaving without him and him being left alone. Later on, Brian would provide Officer Robbins' phone number and confirm the number by looking at his cell phone. This was interesting considering he said previously that he didn't really have a phone. We saw that in the footage. We're going, wait a minute, he just said he didn't have a phone, now he does have a phone, which one is it? Brian said things weren't physical before the point Brian said, let's just take a breather, stating he was locking up the van and they should each go for a walk. Brian said it was at the time Gabby was trying to get the keys from him where he demonstrated pushing her away and said that this is when she hit me. 
Brian said he didn't get really physical, but stated he was just trying to push Gabby away and not get hit. Brian said this was when he got really loud and stated that was what probably drew everyone's attention. Brian said he was yelling, back up, get away. Brian said he was trying to make her calm down and pointed out to Gabby that everyone's watching. Brian said the injury near his eye was from Gabby's phone. Brian said Gabby had jumped on him and was swinging when he pushed her. Brian stated Gabby also wore rings and the combination of the phone, her rings and her nails are what likely caused his injuries. Park Ranger Ryan Crawl points out scratches of the left side of Brian's neck, left side of his nose, scratch near the center of his face, and bruise and bleeding on his right side of his head. Officer Robbins finds an additional injury on Brian's right bicep tricep area. Brian said he was not in any pain and that he wasn't complaining. When asked about medication, Brian said he doesn't take any, but said Gabby has told him in the past to take Xanax because of his high anxiety. When asked if Gabby takes medication, he replies while chuckling, smirking, she's just crazy. Brian then immediately takes back the comment by saying he is kidding. In regards to the driving behavior, Brian stated he hit the curb because Gabby grabbed and turned the wheel. Brian said Gabby told him, I can't believe we're getting pulled over when she grabbed the wheel. When asked about his speed, Brian stated it was probably from the adrenaline of getting pulled over and Gabby grabbing the wheel, further stating he was still shaken up from everything that just happened. Brian apologized multiple times for his driving, stating if he was driving too fast before getting pulled over, he was sorry. Brian said they were headed to the park to get water. Then they write up about Gabby. It says, while still in the vehicle, Gabby's asked why she was crying. Gabby stated they have been fighting this morning, stating there has been personal issues. Gabby states, I was distracting him from driving, I'm sorry. Once separated, Gabby said she has been having a very stressful morning, later confirming that they have not been drinking and they do not drink. Gabby said she was trying to get work done and was apologizing to Brian after she had thrown a bunch of stuff in the back of the van. Gabby said she gets so stressed out and has OCD. Gabby further stated she has a mean attitude but was not trying to be mean about straightening things up. Gabby said she was apologizing but said it in a mean tone and Brian got frustrated with her and locked her out of the van and told her to go take a breather. Gabby said she wanted to get going and said they were out of water and they were going to the park to refill with water. Gabby stated she is trying to start a blog and is building her website and has been stressed out about it. Gabby stated she had so much work she was doing on her computer and said Brian doesn't really believe that she can do any of it, which was upsetting to her. Gabby states they have been fighting all morning and Brian wouldn't let her in the van before. When asked why Brian wouldn't let her in the van, Gabby said Brian told her she needed to calm down. Gabby said, she is perfectly calm and states Brian really stresses her out and said it has been a rough morning. Gabby said Brian walked away to take a breather, but she didn't want to. Gabby said she wanted to sit in the van because all of her stuff was in there. Gabby stated she had been working in the van and that is where she wanted to be. Gabby said Brian told her to relax, but she didn't want to, so she got real mad. I wonder if back at the Moonflower, if Gabby was actually told by Brian, you know, I'm, I'm leaving without you. See ya. And that's why she jumped into that van. I'm so curious as to what that conversation was. It's really sad. Uh, Gabby was asked about the injuries on her left cheek and left arm. Gabby initially said she wasn't sure what caused it, stating the incident happened really fast. Gabby said she was trying to get back in the van and said that Brian's backpack was what got her. Gabby was told about witnesses that reported Brian had hit her. Gabby responded, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. Gabby said she had slapped Brian a couple of times and Brian kept telling her to shut up. Gabby said she hit Brian as I was trying to get him to stop telling me to calm down. Gabby said Brian reacted by grabbing her arm so I wouldn't slap him. Officer Pratt asked if Brian only grabbed her and she said, yeah. Officer Pratt then asked, did he hit you though? And Gabby replied saying, I guess, but I hit him first. Gabby stated Brian grabbed my face, I guess, while also demonstrating the action. Gabby states like he didn't punch me in the face. Gabby said Brian grabs her face and said she could feel a cut on her left cheek. Gabby stated when she touches it, it burns. We saw her do that. When asked about the van hitting the curb, Gabby said, I hit him and stated that was the reason Brian hit the curb. Gabby stated she was hitting Brian while he was driving, but not a lot, but yeah. 
Gabby said it didn't last long and said she saw the police car behind them and she demonstrated throwing a punch. Gabby said it was when she saw the police lights that she hit Brian and said, you're so stupid or you're an idiot. Gabby said she did not touch the steering wheel, but only for like a second, I just saw the lights come on. Gabby demonstrated the punch she did to Brian while stating, you're an idiot. Gabby was asked again if she ever touched the steering wheel and Gabby said, no, no, I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. Gabby was asked if she takes any medication and she stated she didn't. Gabby said she does yoga as a coping mechanism and states she has high anxiety and OCD. When asked if Brian is patient with her, Gabby said, yeah, but I get, it just makes me upset. I know he definitely gets frustrated with me a lot because I have a lot of anxiety and he definitely has anxiety too. Now they go into the written and verbal statement of a witness. It says, Officer Pratt called one of the witnesses via cell phone. He also provided a sworn written statement later on. He stated that he observed Brian and Gabby involved in a dispute. He stated from what he could tell, it appeared at one point they may have been fighting over a phone and he thought it may have been Gabby's phone. He reported Brian was trying to keep Gabby from getting into the van. He said Brian was sitting in the driver's seat while Gabby was trying to get into the van through the driver's side door. He said Gabby hit Brian a few times in the arm and or face while trying to get into the vehicle. He said Gabby forced her way over Brian's lap via the driver's side door and got into the passenger seat. He heard Gabby tell Brian, why do you have to be so mean? He stated he wasn't sure if it was play fighting, stating Gabby's punches were nothing like slugs to the face, but he felt something was off and he had a weird vibe. He stated he wasn't sure how serious the incident was, but to him, it seemed like Brian was trying to leave Gabby and possibly take her cell phone. Officer Pratt asked if he ever saw Brian strike Gabby. He hesitated in his answer and he stated he maybe saw a push or a shove, but nothing like a full on punch to the face or anything. Officer Pratt asked if he could tell if the push or shove was an aggressive action or a defensive maneuver. He said he wasn't sure, stating it was a good question and wasn't entirely sure what was going on. He said it appeared to him that Brian was trying to close off the passenger side of the vehicle and close things up. He said Brian put a backpack or something on the back of the vehicle. He said Brian was stepping into the vehicle and Gabby was out trying to get in. He said he didn't see anything that was Brian kicking Gabby or hitting Gabby, further stating the fighting was kind of light and they were laughing. He again said that Brian was in the driver's seat and had the driver door open and Gabby was hitting Brian near the arm or maybe in the face with an open hand and was telling Brian to let her in. Officer Pratt made arrangements to pick up a statement from him at a later time and he said he would start writing down what he remembered while it was still fresh on his memory. He said he was casually observing the incident and said again that something seemed off. His statement was attached to the report. Now it goes on to Officer Robbins. Officer Robbins is the investigating officer in this case and was assisted by Officer Pratt. It says, it is my understanding and assumption through watching the body worn camera videos that Officer Pratt is more experienced than Officer Robbins and was taking an active role in guiding Officer Robbins throughout this investigation. At the end of the investigation, when another call came out, Officer Pratt asked Officer Robbins if he would feel more comfortable taking the call that just came out, leaving Officer Pratt to conclude this investigation. Ultimately, it was decided Officer Robbins would conclude this case and Officer Pratt left the scene. Officer Robbins advised Gabby that she was not going to be getting charged with anything, but stated he had to separate her and Brian for the night. Officer Robbins tells Brian the same thing, stating that since Gabby did not intend to hurt him, Technically speaking, it does not fit the letter of the code. So he was not charging Gabby with domestic violence assault. Officer Robbins advises them both to not have any contact with each other until the following day and allows Gabby to take custody of the van while Officer Robbins transports Brian to the Bowen Motel. During the investigation, Officer Pratt spoke to the witness, Brian and Gabby, to gather the facts of this case. Officer Robbins spoke with Brian and Gabby and took photographs of Brian's injuries and both of their driver's licenses. Now, side note, in that body cam footage, we hear Brian talk about how he can't afford to get a hotel. And then we later find out that Brian actually had $20,000 in his bank account. So just a little interesting information. Now. They talk about next about the law and terms 
and I will read out the formal complaints in order. It says formal complaints from attorney Tanya Reeves. Number one, an officer discussed his wife's private medical diagnosis and prescribed medication with Brian Laundrie while transporting him to the police station, which was captured on body cam and subsequently released without redaction. And this is the response in the report. Brian was not transported to a police station. He was transported to a local motel. This specific complaint is regarding personal information that was discussed by Officer Robbins regarding his wife. The complaint states Officer Robbins disclosed his wife's medical diagnosis and prescribed medication with Brian Laundrie. At no point during their discussion did Officer Robbins specifically disclose any of these things. Officer Robbins states his wife has anxiety and takes medication for it. Although the line can be drawn and an assumption could be made that there is a diagnosis because of taking medication, we don't know what the actual diagnosis is or what medication she is taking or if or even if the medication is prescribed. I was also unable to find anywhere in Moab City Department policy where it specifies what constitutes personal information and where the line is drawn on what can and cannot be released as it relates to that. Officer Robbins and Officer Pratt spent approximately 75 minutes with Brian and Gabby and demonstrated throughout their contact their ability to have an authentic and respectful conversation regarding this incident. During this interaction, Officer Robbins and Officer Pratt felt comfortable enough to share details regarding their personal lives that relate to Brian and Gabby's relationship and this incident. Officer Robbins is aware his body-worn camera is on and recording and also knows or should know he has no expectation of privacy as it relates to his law enforcement interactions with the public. Additionally, while knowing his body-worn camera is on, if Officer Robbins was comfortable sharing the generic details he did with Brian, it would be difficult to say that he unreasonably violated his wife's privacy or sense of dignity unless a complaint was made by Officer Robbins' wife herself. Number two, several officers discussed the legislature's intent to remove discretion from the responding officers in suspected domestic violence calls and strategize around how they can evade the imposition of legislative intent to arrest and or cite suspects. Response, this concern is addressed in detail later on in the report. To provide a brief response, I would disagree that the officers strategized a way around the statute. I would say the officers made a mistake by not reading the entire assault statute as well as misinterpreting the language in the statute. Number three, an officer appears to carefully and deliberately coach Gabby Petito to answer questions regarding intent in a manner that would allow the officer to avoid issuing her a citation or arrest. Response. Some of the statements made by Officer Pratt to Gabby during this questioning are below. Officer Pratt tells Gabby he has a question for her and how she answered the question to determine what happened next and further states that she was the only one that could answer that question. He says, think very hard before you answered the question. He says, when you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Gabby answers immediately, shaking her head side to side, stating no. He says, what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What were you attempting to accomplish by slapping him? Gabby replies, I was trying to get him to stop telling me to calm down. Officer Pratt then says out loud, well, it doesn't sound like to me she attempted to injure him. I asked Officer Pratt if he recalled the manner in which he questioned Gabby regarding her tent. Officer Pratt stated he recalled telling Gabby to not answer quickly and to think about the questions before answering them. Officer Pratt said, I do recall telling her to think about it because it's important and I think it's a fair thing to tell somebody. Officer Pratt said you would have to assume that Gabby knew what answer Officer Pratt wanted her to give him, which he never provided her. Officer Pratt said what I didn't want to see that day was her take all of the criminal responsibility for this incident upon herself at 22 years old. I asked Officer Pratt if he deliberately coached Gabby in her responses to his questions regarding her intent. Officer Pratt said he had no idea what she was going to say. Officer Pratt acknowledged that he could see why some people might think he coached her. How you answer this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Think very hard before you answer the question. 
Do not quickly answer. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were, yeah. you, what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was, what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to calm down. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. It's 100% your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your own parents, okay? <laughs> He said, I truly did not know what she was going to say next. I was afraid that she was going to say something that was going to make her go to jail. I didn't want her to go to jail, but I would have taken her to jail if she had said the other thing. And I don't consider giving someone fair warning to think about their answer because it's an important question to be coaching. Officer Pratt stated multiple times that he wanted an honest answer out of Gabby. Officer Pratt said the way he asked the questions was to stress the importance to Gabby to think about the question and provide an honest answer. Officer Pratt said, maybe I coached her into giving me an honest answer because that's what I was wanting. That's what I wanted and honestly that's haunted me. Her saying, I just wanted him to stop telling me to calm down. She's little. I have daughters. I can imagine them in these situations. I can totally see one of my daughters just wanting someone to stop telling them to calm down. I believe what she said. I believed it then. I still do. Officer Pratt said he was not deliberately coaching Gabby and just wanted an honest answer. Officer Robbins was present during the above questioning. I asked Officer Robbins if he recalled this conversation. He said vaguely. I asked if Officer Robbins recalled the manner in which the questions were asked. Officer Robbins said he didn't and only remembered Gabby being asked about the intent and her denying the intent to hurt Brian. Number four, an officer refers to Gabby Petito as a blonde haired, blue eyed girl who is 110 pounds dripping wet and refers to Brian Laundrie as a big, tough, strong guy who can defend himself which is not relevant evidence when evaluating the protocol for legislature mandated action in domestic violence calls. Further, it is unclear why the eye and hair color of one of the subjects would be material to any analysis and may suggest the officers were operating under a confirmation bias or that they were unconsciously influenced by stereotypes about who is involved in domestic violence. The complainant, Tanya Reeves, sent a follow-up email apologizing and stated she misattributed the blonde-haired, blue-eyed remark, which is correct as she states in her follow-up email that information was said by Brian, not the officers. The first part of this complaint is addressed in further detail in this report. Number five, the officer makes disparaging references to the legislation relevant to this call in the presence of the subjects claiming that he cannot treat the subjects differently because of the gender of the primary aggressor and then proceeds to do precisely that. Response. While reviewing the body-worn camera footage, this topic is discussed on multiple occasions. Officer Pratt discusses with Brian, Gabby, and other officers the lack of discretion in these cases. When describing this to Brian and Gabby, he explains that it doesn't matter the gender and or size of whoever the primary aggressor is or if their injuries are minimal. Officer Pratt states they have to treat all domestic violence assault cases the same. Officer Pratt tells Gabby that the law doesn't allow them to treat people different, stating even if it makes no sense that you probably could not physically destroy this man the way that he could if he attacked you, we can't treat you different. He further tells Gabby that the law was made in Utah because they don't trust the police to make good decisions because too many cops have made bad decisions. He goes on to say that this is why they took discretion away on domestic violence cases, stating that whoever the primary aggressor is has to be charged. Officer Pratt tells Gabby, we literally have no choice. He does not want to press charges. We don't have any choice in this. He further states that if he had discretion, he would separate them for the night and tell them to stop hitting each other, but I lawfully don't have discretion here. While an argument could be made that his statements were disparaging, it was done in the context of trying to explain what law enforcement could and could not do. As far as the officers doing precisely what they said they couldn't do, that is explained in further detail in this report. Number six, the officer references a 911 call that identified Brian Laundrie pushing Gabby Petito away from him and then says there is a second witness who they haven't spoken with yet but may corroborate this claim. The 911 call of the second witness in fact claims Brian Laundrie slapped Gabby Petito. 
should the officer have obtained the statement for the second witness or listened to the 911 call before determining who was the primary aggressor? Answer. There was only one 911 call in reference to this incident. That caller reported Brian slapping Gabby. The other witness was found on scene at the Moonflower and provided a verbal and written statement later on. The issue is addressed in more detail later on in the report, but in short, the answer would be yes. The officers should have obtained a statement from the 911 caller before making a final determination if it was possible for them to do so. Number seven. The officers twisted themselves into knots trying to find a way to avoid affecting an arrest or citation because of their sympathy for this couple and their assessment that no one was actually in danger, which is precisely what the legislature attempted to curtail, sub substituting the judgment of the officers for the mandates of the legislation. Response, I believe it is clear from the body-worn camera footage that stating the officers twisted themselves into knots trying to find a way to avoid affecting an arrest is a gross mischaracterization of what actually happened. Law enforcement is being second guessed now more than ever, which has led to officers taking more caution in time as allowed before making a decision to try and avoid the inevitable second guessing. These officers were authentic in their interactions and treated Brian and Gabby with kindness and respect. I would say the officers displayed sympathy and empathy for this couple, which undoubtedly led to Officer Pratt second guessing himself despite the fact he said multiple times what needed to happen. Officer Pratt resorted to calling a supervisor and then rereading the assault statute. From there, the statute is not fully read and what was read was misinterpreted, which led to not arresting anyone in this incident. Number eight. The officer concluded in his report that he did not believe the incident rose to the level of domestic assault so much as a mental health crisis. Have officers received sufficient training in mental illness and domestic violence to accurately make that determination? Answer. I was unable to answer this question in full but asked both officers for an explanation into why they categorized this incident in such a way. Their responses are documented later on in this report. Number nine. One additional concern I wish to add to my complaint is the officer's lack of investigatory follow-up after Gabby Petito told him that Brian had grabbed her face with his fingers digging in the point of causing a cut on the inside of her cheek. It was hard to discern her exact words, although I did hear the word cut. But she seemed to indicate that her cheek was swelling up or tender and she cupped it with her hand as she described the injury. The very first question the officer asked in response to this was if Brian had been drinking. His very next question returns to the swerve and curb strike incident. In the footage available to me, he never returns to Gabby's allegation of a crime to ask more questions, investigate, or follow up in any manner. The officers seem distracted by the center line swerve and curb strike and the admission that Gabby had punched Brian in the shoulder when the lights were activated. They spend the majority of the investigation pursuing this allegation while the reason for the initial detention, which is the two 911 calls reporting a man shoving, slapping a woman, fell by the wayside. Let me know your thoughts below on that. Even when Gabby reports a battery that caused injury, her statement is entirely ignored because the officers seem to be operating under a confirmation bias that influenced how they interpret the evidence and their theory of the case. Brian was thoroughly examined for evidence, including an examination underneath his clothing for injuries of which he may not be aware. Photographic evidence was obtained and he was offered EMS services for his injuries. None of this appears to have been provided to Gabby Petito even after she reported a battery resulting in injury. Response, these concerns are addressed in multiple sections throughout this report. This little part actually reminds me of even when you go to a hospital, oftentimes a woman will be asked and, and brought aside like, is there anything going on? Do I need to know anything? And I find that interesting here because it's true. They did focus so much on what happened then, but not that initial call. Let me know your comments below. So the next pages talk about what was deemed as a violation. And there's a few things that they did deem as violations by the officers. 